truth is, I am Iron Man. I think Tony Stark is one of the coolest characters ever set to screen. He's charismatic, conflicted, Robert Downey Jr. And best of all, he's my favorite kind of hero. One who uses brain over brawn. But over the course of the MCU, I've grown frustrated with this character for one simple reason. He's kind of ruining science. My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. And I don't mean like, oh, the fancy blue box from the beginning of time wouldn't work like that if you put it in a big CGI light beam. No, my problem is how the biggest movies, the ones most permeating pop culture, completely skimp on their portrayals of what it's like to do real science. Before we continue, I should probably clarify that when I say science, I'm really referring to STEM, which is basically an approach to learning that integrates science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Now, STEM covers a ton of topics, so I'm not trying to nitpick every field the MCU has pulled into the exposition dumps, but the STEM approach of going from idea to breakthrough has a few notable characteristics, like lots of research and investigation, a fair bit of trial and error, some collaboration, and the fact that no matter how good you are, it will be a long and methodical process that annoyingly demands a good bit of patience. And these aren't only the characteristics of doing science, they are characteristics that, in my opinion, can make for some really great storytelling. So with that nuance in mind, let's look at the ways Marvel handles the hard work of doing science. In Endgame, Steve and the gang go to ask Tony for help inventing time travel. And now you want to pull a, what do you call it? A time heist? Time heist. I believe the most likely outcome will be our collective demise. And you're telling me that you won't even- That's right, Scott, I won't even. I can't. I really like this scene. I think it's an interesting setup that implies that this is a problem that Tony can't solve. A problem that actually requires Cap to go find a bigger brain. We're gonna need a really big brain. Bigger than his? And pull in Bruce Banner so that they can work together to solve, again, time travel. But the problem is that before we even get to see Banner and the gang try to solve the problem, Tony just does it. Shit. Like this scene of Tony inverting a Mobius strip is before Banner tries sending Ant-Man on a time travel test drive, so when Banner's test trials mess up, it doesn't feel like there are any real stakes. I see this as an absolute win. Because we know Tony solved time travel. Cap just looks sad for a second, Tony shows up and gives him the formula, and boom, time heist is back on. Now, from a directing point of view, I get it. You need to just yada yada this along so we can go on a fun time heist. But this portrayal is just, I mean, it's kind of lazy. You want this to be a high stakes problem demanding a staggering scientific breakthrough, but you did the payoff before you built any real tension. It's like you don't even want to explore that struggle. Like imagine this alternative. You have a five year time jump, right? Wouldn't it have been better if before Ant-Man showed up, Tony and Bruce and every other person still around, not just the PhD candidates, were poring over every scientific and magic trick they could think of to undo the snap. And I mean, just trying and trying to the point where they are on the verge of giving up. Then, instead of Doctor Strange just randomly picking a future where a rat brings Ant-Man back, Ant-Man actually gets sucked up into one of their experiments. Now, instead of having your plot center on random chance and Tony taking an hour out of his busy day to solve time travel, you have a layered story with collaboration, trial and error, plenty of chances for character building, and the added benefit of showing the audience how their breakthrough was the product of real, applied, scientific struggle. And don't get me wrong, I still think Tony Stark is great. What I'm really trying to highlight is how this scene is actually the culmination of Tony slowly sliding into the trope of omnidisciplinary scientist, or more commonly, the science guy. Sorry Bill, but that's TV tropes label, not mine. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. They're the master of all science, regardless of what they actually got a degree in. Sometimes their super science is the point of the gag. Other times they're just the justification for why this particular science thing keeps the ball rolling. And technically Tony isn't even the only super scientist in the MCU, but let's take a moment to consider how these other scientists are used. Bruce Banner isn't just a smart science man. His real character is about balancing his literal Banner brains with his Hulk brawn. Shuri from Black Panther is brilliant, but she's usually treated more like King T'Challa's Agent Q. Spider-Man is super smart, but his story is about responsibility. And even Thor, for some reason, has an entourage of PhD holders for his movies about Norse mythology. But in a franchise where three of your core Avengers are the product of super science, Tony has six movies where his abilities as a scientist and engineer are the reason for his involvement. 
Now, personally, I find this trope super annoying, especially for Tony, because of how it both gets people excited for science while misleading them about what science is really like. Ignoring the fact that it's usually an Elon Musk type with access to vast resources solving many of these problems, one thing that these characters always perpetuate is that science is quick, effortless, and often a solo endeavor. Contrast this with a real life super scientist like Einstein, one of countless dedicated scientists from history who took most of his life to develop the theories that have made so many technologies possible. His success didn't come in an afternoon, and he definitely didn't do it by himself. His life's work was from a love of questioning the universe and finding collaborators who pushed him along that journey. And even then, he didn't build a supersuit that we know of. And this brings me to my final point. I don't think every movie needs to be the Martian in terms of how it portrays science. I know we can't perfectly represent this process in a movie that's only... Hold up, Endgame was over three hours? What do you mean we don't have time for this? Marvel, I know you can do a better job portraying STEM in your movies because you already did it at least three other times. In Iron Man 1, Tony Stark didn't build his armor so he could be Iron Man. He builds it because he had a problem, a need to escape from terrorists. Then over the course of the movie, he decides that this suit that he built in captivity for survival could be developed into a force for good. But he doesn't just build it. John Favreau, the creative genius that he is, found fun ways to incorporate both moral and scientific setbacks into the creation of Iron Man. The reason we have such an easy time believing that Tony can solve time travel is because of how perfectly Iron Man demonstrated Tony's ability to work through the scientific and engineering process, inventing new technologies and solutions throughout the film. Best of all, the film cleverly shows us that the icing problem that came from an early attempt wasn't a failure, but a valuable lesson that saves him during the fight at the end of the film. There's a reason this movie launched a decade of superhero films and cinematic universes, and it's in no small part to how well it portrays the intersection of scientific investigation and human passion. Something that they tried to repeat in later films, but every time to a lesser degree until it just felt like a minor speed bump on the road to the post credit scene. My point is that science is cool, really cool, and I love seeing it portrayed in pop culture. I understand why a director wouldn't want to dedicate an entire act to solving a scientific problem, but these movies are how a lot of people, especially young people, get introduced to all the amazing possibilities that come from pursuing a life in STEM. And by making one character a stand-in for all of science, technology, engineering, and math, we're doing the audience a great disservice. We're sending a message that science is the duty of a privileged few super geniuses when it should be seen as an opportunity for all of us to question and learn about the world around us. I'm going to miss seeing Tony in these movies, though I'll bet money he's still going to be around. But I also hope that the movies will find new, fun ways to make science a meaningful and engaging part of future films, especially as my other favorite Marvel super genius steps into the role. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, maybe comment with your favorite example of super science and cinema. Don't forget to go check out my Patreon and all the cool stuff I leave over there, and I'll see you next time.